Hey there, want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are available on Spotify as well. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for podcasters, I've been able to reach more listeners as well as start earning advertising revenue. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey everybody, how's it going? The question of the day. Here we go. Have you ever wondered what you could be doing better when it comes to your annual review? Well, stay tuned. You are listening to the Career Talk Learn, Grow, Thrive podcast, where we talk about pretty much everything career related. And I'm your host, Stephanie Dennis, and I really like to just tell people how it is. Um, I don't have a lot of sugar to put on top of things. I, at one point, someone asked me to sugarcoat things. And I'm like, I don't even buy sugar, so I'm out. I got nothing. So that's just where we're at. Today in episode number 45, we're talking about how to maximize your annual review and a little bit about my background. It is in human resources. It's what I have my master's degree in and I'm really passionate about helping people with their career, sharing my knowledge, passing along what I've learned. So I made this podcast. I also want to mention most of my podcasts do contain swearing. Let's get into it today. Okay, so the first thing I want to make sure that we're on the same page about as it relates to your annual review or performance review or whatever your company is calling it is this is a two-way conversation. And what I mean by a two-way conversation is it's not just the other person who's going to be doing all the talking. And I also want to prepare you to hear both positive as well as negative feedback. They're not all going to be positive, all of the talking points anyways, and they're not all going to be negative. So you need to be able to receive both positive and negative information in your performance review. So I have four topics we're going to talk about as it relates to your annual review. Number one is asking questions. And you want to make sure you're asking questions on a variety of topics. And some of those topics are going to be areas in which you can improve. Your weaknesses, you want to understand also on the flip side of that, what your strengths are. And one really important thing to touch on here is just because you have strengths and weaknesses doesn't mean you should spend all your time trying to improve your weaknesses. Studies actually show if you spend most of your energy improving your strengths, that's where you're really going to be able to excel and thrive and do amazingly well. And we also want to understand what our weaknesses are so we can not necessarily spend our time improving them, And more so just to be aware of what they are. So we're conscious of that in our day to day, right? So for example, one of my weaknesses is patience. Like hands down, ask anyone who knows me, anyone who's worked with me. Patience is just not something I have. If I need to get something done and I need to get it done now, I would figure out a way to make it fucking happen, right? So that's important because there are certain things that I do in terms of Uh, For example, hiring people where typically when you hire someone in your company, IT has to generate logins and all that stuff so they can use their computer. Well, regardless of all the patients I could have in the world or not, it doesn't matter because I am not IT and I can't generate that login. So being aware of that and understanding just because I can't make that go faster doesn't change the process. Other areas where we want to make sure we're asking questions is around our performance, 
to our goals. So of course we should know what our goals are, but we want to understand how we perform to those goals and also performance to our peers. Typically in a review, you're going to understand how you've ranked against your peers. So you can kind of understand essentially where you sit, right? Like, am I number one on the team? Am I last on the team? That's something important to know because there are going to be areas in which we need to improve every single year. And if you're in, for example, a sales position and you're last on the team, that's important to know because you need to step it up. Maybe you need to do more prospecting. Maybe you need to do more cold calling. Maybe you need to do better follow-up. Whatever it is, there are areas in which you're going to need to improve. So you're not last in the team, right? You don't want to be last all the time. And if you do, sales definitely is not your game. So that's an obvious right there. You also want to be asking questions around the company performance. Oftentimes, our reviews and our raises are tied to a combined effort, right? So most companies have a component of your annual increase based on company performance as well as based on individual or team performance. Or maybe your raise isn't necessarily based on that, but your bonus could be based on a combination of those three factors. And then I would also be asking questions around the team performance. And a couple examples there could easily be, how did our team perform against the team goals? How did we do overall? And that's going to help you understand how you played a part in contributing to those bigger team goals. Okay, the second thing we want to be talking about in our reviews or performance appraisals is aligning with your manager. This is going to cover a lot of different topics. So the first thing is going to be making a plan moving forward and making sure you're both on the same page and you're in alignment there. The second thing is going to be understanding what your action items are. So what exactly you need to do to accomplish whatever goals or plans you've set in place together which leads me perfectly into the third thing, which is your goals. What are your goals? What do you need to accomplish? And then for four, number four, are there any metrics attached to those goals? Looking at our sales example, if you have a sales goal of a million per year, so your metrics might be 84,000 per month or 20 new prospects per week or whatever, just understanding, again, what those metrics are and if you have any. The fifth thing I would also talk about is scheduling or asking about regular check-ins. The last thing we want to do is set all these goals, establish all these metrics, and then wait an entire year before we check in to calibrate on how we're doing. And then if you're unclear about your job description or your day-to-day duties or your responsibilities, now is a really good time in that annual review process to recalibrate on that as well. All right, the third thing we're going to be talking about in our annual review or performance appraisal or performance review, again, whatever your company is calling it, is the money, right? Let's be real. We all get excited about annual reviews because that's when we get to learn what the money is going to be. How many dollars more are we going to get, right? What's my increase? How did we get to that increase? That sort of thing. So typically here, just so you guys know, your annual increase typically is a preset amount. Whether it's dollar amount, percentage, what have you, usually going into this conversation, your manager already knows that number. However, this can be an opportunity for you to do a little negotiation. Now, I want to be clear, typically, (laughs) I'm going to use that word a lot, typically, your manager isn't necessarily going to have approval or authorization or a preset budget to negotiate a higher increase. So generally speaking, how this works is typically your manager is given a certain amount or percent they're able to give in terms of raises across the board for their team. And then they allocate those raises or funds or percentages across the team based on how people performed to their goals throughout the year. All that to say is while this could be a great opportunity to negotiate, I also don't want to set false hope here because usually these numbers are predetermined. But if you've totally crushed it for the year and you are number one and you are above and beyond your goals and you are just killing it. So let's say your annual increase was 3%. 
but you blew your goals out of the water. Maybe you ask for 5% or 6% or, or whatever figure or percentage or number you have in your head. Now, if your manager says no and they're unable to do that, I would then ask them what sort of goals and metrics you need to hit in the next, let's say, three to six months in order to have that conversation again. So how this could play out, let's say your manager tells you that your increase is going to be 3% and you respond with something along the lines of, I'm so grateful, thank you so much, given everything we've discussed in this conversation of me meeting and really significantly exceeding my goals, I would like to propose a 6% increase. And they say, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide that sort of increase at this time. You say, no, I understand. Thank you for being transparent with me. Is it possible for us to set up a plan of action and for me to set certain goals? And if I achieve those goals in the next three to six months, could we revisit this conversation for a potential additional increase? It could be something as simple as that, guys. If they say no, then no problem. What sort of plan do we need to put in place? So we can have that conversation again. And if they say there's an, there's nothing they can do, you know, even in six months, they couldn't provide an additional raise. At least you asked and you know the answer. But if they say you can, awesome. Two raises in a year. I'll take it, right? <laughs> okay, so the fourth thing we want to be talking about in these conversations is growth. So what sort of new skills are you going to learn in the next year? What sort of conferences are you going to attend? Or maybe there's particular training sessions you're already interested in. You want to see and understand and discuss how you're going to further develop yourself and your career in the next 12 months. This is really important. You need to take charge of your career. While there are a lot of really, really good leaders out there, majority of the leaders aren't necessarily keeping growth in mind during a performance review. So if they're not bringing that up, you want to make sure you're bringing that to their attention. This is also important too because some of those conferences and training sessions that you might want to attend to further your development have a cost right associated with them. So we want to make sure we get that into our manager's budget so we can learn and grow and thrive. So those are the four main things we want to be talking about during our reviews. And I also want to point out that throughout the year, you really want to be preparing for the following year. And what I mean by that is keeping track of your progress, writing down, you know, your accomplishments, everything that you've achieved throughout the year. So you have a running log or a running journal, or maybe it's not even a notebook, maybe it's an Excel sheet. I don't know, like whatever works best whatever system you create that's going to be easy for you to use, access, and update. And I would be looking at that every day, every week, every month, at a minimum monthly. But some of us are accomplishing stuff, significant stuff, every day or every week. So don't sell yourself short by not writing down those accomplishments because those accomplishments are going to be things we want to talk about next year when we're ready to ask for that bigger raise as well. So that's it. As a quick recap, the four things we're going to be talking about during our reviews are one, asking a lot of questions, two, making sure we are aligning with our manager, three, of course, those dollar bills, right? The money. <laughs> and then number four is the growth component. Okay, guys, gals, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for showing up and listening to the episode and sharing the podcast if you haven't already done that. I will have the episode show notes in the description as well as over at the website. Again, that's findingthebestfit.com. If you are new here and haven't heard, I am launching a career course. It's going to be launching in beta, which means a super amazing price and the opportunity to provide a lot of feedback and really perfect it. And what I will be doing is if you're part of the beta, if we do decide to make any changes, you will have lifetime access to the course. So you will see the new and revised version as well, which is really exciting. But this course is going to be a deep dive into all things career related. So if you are a person who is stuck in their career and you don't know the next steps, or if you're the person who is changing jobs every year or two and you hate them all and you just feel stuck and you're like, what the hell? This course probably is for you. Make sure you get on the wait list. 
the website or the link to get on the wait list is going to be in the episode description as well as the show notes. And it's findingthebestfit.com slash career dash waitlist. Do not miss out. All right, guys, that's it. You are amazing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Have a fabulous day.